On this week's episode, I've got an anecdote to share about movie theater attendance. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a hoot. Then for our case, helping your parents out with tech support. Is there a line you draw? How far is too far? Stay tuned for our verdicts. What you are listening to is real. The parties involved are not cool. They are actual geeks with a case pending in the court of public opinion. The party's case has been dismissed, and the dispute will be settled here on our podcast. There will be no lawyers. There will be no witness testimony. The judge's decisions are final. Hello, I'm Judge Ivan. I'm Judge Jonathan, and this is Geeks on Trial. Today's case, Geek Squad Goals. Welcome to Geeks on Trial. This is the podcast where we settle petty disputes between actual geeks over movies, video games, board games, and more. If you'd like to submit your own geeky case for a future episode, you can email us at geeksontrial at gmail.com. You can also support the show over at patreon.com slash geeksontrial for just a few bucks a month, and you'll gain early access to both our audio and our video episodes before they're released to the general public. Jonathan! Woo! How are you today? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, I'm doing all right. It's the fall weather is coming in. The Jewish holidays are here. Mm-hmm. Halloween uh, was in the stores. Now it's Christmas time in the stores. <laughs> That's right. I've, I've been. I'm shopping for my Thanksgiving turkey and my New Year's re- decorations. Uh, it's a. It's just. It's. It's the time of year everybody loves, isn't it? Every isn't it? hurricane season. Hurricane season. I love hurricane season. What is your hurricane decoration? I usually like to go with storm windows mm-hmm. and. A cellar. Okay, that's good. I usually uh, get the glasses, the hurricane glasses, to drink the hurricane drink out of. Interesting. There's an okay. alcoholic beverage called a hurricane. If you didn't okay, know. I always play that that Bob Dylan song, Hurricane. Mm-hmm, that's good. Okay, uh, I had something that I wanted to bring up at the start of the today's show well, that uh, well, you, I that didn't tell you about ago. in advance. You I understand. I understand, but since I missed it, I'm going to do it here on Geeks on Trial. Now, this is an anecdote that relates to something we talked about a few episodes back. Do you recall we talked about the movie theater trash episode? I do. And one of the things we went into in that episode was the act of watching the credits in the movie theater – and and how whether or not I was worried if that annoyed the ushers and you being a movie theater usher previously in your life, uh, I think your the ultimate consensus from you was the consensus from a single man <laughs> was was that like it was okay like you I don't think you you said it wasn't a terrible crime to do right because either okay fine some people watch it some people don't what I didn't ever do was turn on the the work lights which is a it's the not the house lights, but like you know the fluorescent lights that they they turn on to clean. Um, I would just either come back or just watch the movie credits. There's a lot of movies where I just saw the credits only. <laughs> right. Yeah. If there's a if there's a end credit scene, you're really confused. Which is actually <laughs> yeah. the, the the one of many shitty things about working in a movie theater is you just see credits for a lot of movies, and that could ruin a movie for you. Yeah, I feel like the worst thing would be coming in and you only ever see like the last two minutes of the movie. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's that's no good. That's bad. All oh, right. So see, anyway. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I've so this came up in my real life again. Okay. And I felt I I I should share this on the show because just the other day I went and saw a recent movie called it just came out. It's a horror movie called It Lives Inside. You ever okay. heard of this movie? No. But for the story, yes, it's great. I love it. Yeah, it's um, it's not a very good movie, <laughs> but it's fine. That's okay. not important. The movie is not important to the story. Uh, I went and saw it. A uh, uh, movie ended, and as I have said previously, I will always watch the credits. Unless a, a movie's got to be really bad. If I'm leaving and the credits aren't right. done, I probably hated that movie. Or, like, <laughs> I think the only time I've never stayed for credits is, just like, if I was it, f- feeling ill or if it was, like, a movie like Oppenheimer – where it's like I've been sitting there for three and a half hours. And I'm like, oh, I need to use the bathroom. That's uh, perfectly understandable. And we don't need to get into it. I know some people d- don't understand this, but I-, I like to watch the credits. I like to decompress, okay, after the movie. Uh, and this was a late showing. Uh, the movie started at 945. 
and it it was over around um, eleven thirty, some somewhere somewhere around there. Okay. And I'm the only person in this theater, in mm-hmm. this not in the whole movie theater, but I'm certainly the only person in this screening. Okay. And the credits start rolling. I'm sitting in my chair. Like the second the credits show up on the screen, before they're not even scrolling yet. It's like the it's when they're just showing one name at a time still. You know right. what I mean? I don't know if there's the, a the pre credits credits term. The pre credits shirt. Well, we used to call those in the business the the important credits. The important credits, that's mm-hmm. right. Uh I in the corner of my eye, I notice a figure to to my Ooh, left. Spooky. St- Standing, I know it is a little spooky. It's, you don't want to see this at a horror movie. Uh, standing, uh, not just at first, like in the theater, and then pretty quickly, like within thirty seconds, this figure is right at the end of my row. Like they're at the oh. end of the row, and I'm starting to feel self conscious. But I'm like, I'm just gonna ignore this person. I'm just sitting in my chair. I'm watching the credits. I'm, I'm, I'm not moving. I'm not I'm doing anything. Paid for a ticket. I'm here. <laughs> The reason why you have a job is because I'm here. <laughs> it becomes don't don't put those words in my mouth. <laughs> but it it becomes clear after a while I can tell like this person's not only are they standing at the end of the aisle, they're like looking at me. Like I can feel them like looking at me. And like I said, I'm the only other person. Like in this they're intimidating room. <laughs> you. They're watching you going, This mother bleeper is sitting here watching this credit. I gotta go home to the kids. <laughs> yeah, so now the credits start to roll, the the, the post pre credits, the right. official credits, mm-hmm. and that's when in my theater the uh, the lights will start to come on. So it's right. not like fully lit, but like lit enough, enough so you can for you get can up. get her up. Yeah, I'm not. You know, again, I'm not. I'm not getting up. I'm watching these credits. You won't. <laughs> guy, you won't let people skip you skip in line, but you will <laughs> let people. It's not fine. You tried. You did, okay. you did your Listen. best, and I I appreciate it. The people at home appreciate it. I'm just gonna drink my tea. <laughs> This guy comes over, like, moves closer. Like, he's maybe a seat away from me, but he's standing still. Oh, so he's, like, inching over to, like... Yes. The he walls are closing walks in. walks next to me. And not only that, he, he speaks to me. He goes, scary movie, huh? <laughs> now, this is this is a nightmare, right? For, for me, this is an absolute nightmare. Okay, this uh, is... Okay, I have a lot of things I can add okay, to this, but I'll let okay. you get done. Yeah, we'll get through it all. I don't want to talk to anybody at a movie theater. Certainly not on a you know a Sunday night. It's late at night. I'm I'm just trying to get in and out quietly. Like you probably you went to this movie at a specific time because you knew it's going to be empty. It's going to be just me there. I'm going right. alone. Right. I'm picking my perfect seat. Okay. Yeah, all that stuff. All that is true. All that is great. Uh, and I'm so I'm just like uh huh. Like I'm still trying to do my best to be like. Yep, scary movie, haha, like thinking, okay, hoping he's just going to stop talking to me after a minute. No, no. He keeps talking to me. It becomes pretty clear that he's like, wants me to leave. <laughs> like, it's pretty obvious. So I go, do you need me? Do you want me to move so you can? He's got like a spray bottle. I'm like, do you want me to move so you can clean up? And he goes, oh, I'm not kicking you out. I'm not kicking you out. And he starts – he uses that phrase several times over the course of this conversation. Uh-huh, because, like, you know, he was told probably before. He has probably been reported for kicking people out. I'm not kicking you out. Just let me tell you that I am not kicking you out. The more times he says it, the clearer it is that that's exactly he is what kicking he's you doing. Out. He starts squirting. Um, he cleans your glasses while you're sitting there. And let me be clear, again, also, for people listening, I have, I have no snacks. I have no drinks. I have nothing. Okay, that was this, be one of my questions. This seat is if po- probably cleaner than when I came in. I have not made a m- drop of food. No trace of me exists in this seat, okay? Well, what people don't know you. about you, before you come into a movie theater, you find your seat, you bring your Windex and your squeegee, and you clean the area around you. I do. And I'm you, have a a, you, you sign it, too. You're like, was sat in by Jonathan, and I'm, you know. And I say to the guy, I said to him, I was like, oh, I don't, you know, I, I didn't have any food or anything if you're, if you're worried about it. And he goes... He's like, I don't know what he says. He's like, yeah, well, that's not even – he's like, that's not even my thing. Like, they come in and sweep later or something. All he wants to do, I guess, is just spray the tray down and the seat maybe. I don't know. So, uh, finally, I'm just like, okay, whatever. I get up. I'm like – and he keeps saying, I'm not kicking you out. I'm not kicking you out. And I'm just like, it's fine, man. Like, if you need to clean it, I'll just move. Like, that's fine. I'll, I go and stand by – I stand by the exit because I still want to – going to watch the rest of these damn credits. He cleans the seat. It must take him three seconds. I mean, he, like, sprays it. He's done. Right. As right. he's leaving, 
he he's like he looks he's like surprised or at least he feigns surprised that I'm still there. <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, you're gonna watch all the credits?" Huh? He's like, "Oh, well, that's yeah, that's not what I would do." But okay, okay. He said <laughs> he, that to you. Yes. <laughs> and he walks out. Okay. And I didn't say anything. I'm just and I'm just like. All right. These credits, by the way, this is not a Marvel movie. This is like a low budget horror movie. These credits probably last three minutes. You know what I right. mean? This is. But like... it's also like it's a low budget thing. Those are the, the credits that you want to watch. Like you know, we're in the middle of like a writers and actors strike. We're we're we are people who are like you know partially in an industry. Like we support actors, and plus it's you want to hear the music. The, the the director made this for you. There's a reason yeah. why these credits exist, and AMC just doesn't go, or movie theaters doesn't go. Turn the lights on. I like to see what's going on. I was curious. Yeah, I, I like to, I like to check them out. Um, so anyway, I, this was this is kind of ruined my night because I'm like mortified now. But like this is literally from what I was talking about in that other episode. This is my worst case scenario of what I'm right. afraid is going to happen to me. <laughs> and so, uh, but I'm also I feel very defensive, and I feel like I don't feel like I was doing anything wrong, and I feel like this guy could have just waited again three minutes or at least I wish he would have just come up and said, Hey, could you please move so I can clean this as opposed to like being incredibly passive aggressive about he it. Was, you were bullied out of your seat. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't like, I don't want a conversation. I don't want anyone talking to me at all, let alone about, Hey, I'm not kicking you out. <laughs> you don't want right. to not say it. You don't or, say Oh, wow, you're one of the assholes who watches the credits? Jeez, I don't do that, and I work in a movie yeah. theater. So um, this was a terrible experience for me, but it sounds like uh, this is like a little bit a mini uh, Geeks on Trial case before we get to our main case where I'm the center of it. Because this right. this does feel like uh, I could go on Reddit right now and say I'm I the asshole for this Well, that's – okay, so story finished? Yeah. Oh, and he also he did say at one point something about, like, I'm trying to get out of here. I think he did Oh, say that. okay, that's worse then. So <laughs> I often like I we've all worked in retail jobs and, and restaurant services and, and stuff like that. So we know what it is to be like, okay, it's nine o'clock. It's a so the first thing I wanna mention, when I worked for AMC, your your movie theater, this is this is a smaller chain, right? That you went yeah. to? Okay. Yeah. So AMC, after a certain time, you don't they send the cleaning crew home. Because it's the morning's crew job to clean the theater. So mm. at, at like 10 o'clock or so, AMC, we, we send we used to send everyone home. And they have either a professional cleaner who comes in and they're the ones who like do a full vacuum job when the theater's done. So they really don't do that at late night movies, which is why I used to go to late night movies because they don't care. Mm. Secondly, there's another AMC rule on the book. If there is less than five people in a the theater, you don't clean that theater. Hmm. Because how much of a mess could five non-children, let's just say five normal adults, make that's going to waste your time as an employee to go clean the theater? It's all that min maximize time thing. All this guy had to do, oh, he's not eating food. There's one person in there. Done. Now, the only yeah. other weird thing I can think of is it's still a holdover from COVID. Hmm. That they, by law, have to clean the seats. They have to spray it with a disinfectant and, you know, you're gross. So they had to wipe your seat down. And yep. that's a thing that they have to do. So by law, he has to do this. I wonder, like, maybe he was a manager. Because otherwise, I feel like, like you're saying, if he was just a regular employee, it would be an easy thing to to take a glance and say, there's no one will ever know if I did or didn't clean this seat. But I feel like leave. if it was a manager... It would they mean just, he would be better about it. Right, because, like, also, the, the one thing, like, I don't like to... You don't want to intimidate your customers. <laughs> you don't want to intimidate right. your customer, but as a customer, like, I would have gone and talked to a manager after that situation. I'm not going to lie. Part of me was like, uh, uh, should I send an email or something and complain I about this guy? Want, but then they're going to know it was me. <laughs> they're going to know. And I like, frequent this movie theater. But they don't know you. Like, they don't know you by name of this theater. It's not a small, like, one-screen theater. Like, I don't like to be the quote-unquote Karen... But, like, right. when the employee is, like, clearly try, if he didn't say, I'm trying to get out of here, I would have like, mm. fine. But he's literally being like, bro, you're the only reason why I'm not going home. And that's like a, that's a, you know what, buddy? I'm going to stay longer. <laughs> right. Again, like, there are certain situations where, 
Like, I could see if you're a waiter, for instance, and if it's, like, 10 o'clock and you closed at 9 and someone's still eating. Like, right. there are there are lines where it can become annoying. I don't think this was a lie. Like I said, and this was three it's more It's a movie minutes. theater. That you are literally yeah. there still enjoying the movie. Right. Which the credits are the movie. Yeah. The ticket entitles me to this screening like, in full. You paid for an hour and a half worth of seats. I'm not sitting there when the screen's off, you know, right. like that would be very different. <laughs> and like a lot of theaters won't let you into a theater until the movie is like at a specific time. So it's not like there's other people. Mm. Was this the last movie in the building? It was. I'm sure it was one of them. However, there were definitely at least like five or I, other six, five or six other people came out after me from other theaters. So I wasn't like literally the last person in this building. So he didn't need to come in there. He didn't need to clean. I would 100% like contact somebody. Maybe do it, it as like a as a different email address. Like if you don't, if you're worried about your name, <laughs> but like that is really like that's not okay. It felt rude. It felt it's like a strange, like he you know I'm sure maybe he was just having a bad night or he really had something really important to do. But, but at I that just point, feel just like, leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like if like, he. It would be it would be one thing again, yeah. If I actually had made a mess of some kind, and he was like, "Oh no, I'm gonna have to clean this," but there was literally nothing he needed to do. Like, right. it was I and didn't even touch this tray. <laughs> that he like literally came up and was like, "You don't need to leave, but get out." <laughs> yeah, it was. It's the equivalent of like uh, it would be a shame if something happened to your storefront right. here. <laughs> but I also would have like. So, like, you went up and stood in the back. I wonder if you, like, moved to a different row and sat in another seat. If you, <laughs> you like, had to clean that, too. <laughs> following you. Yeah, maybe I should have just moved one over and been like, go go at it. Yeah, I'm just going to hang out. But, like, I think it's, you're not the, you're not guilty. Thank you. In this situation. Because it's like, <laughs> he literally, A, this is literally his job. Fine, whatever. But you didn't do anything in the theater. There's no mess. There's no... Yeah, I anything. didn't do anything to make his life harder other than potentially delaying him a few minutes. At that point, yeah. I'd be like, just leave the bottle here. I'll clean it. Which is the same thing as saying, like, if the movie had been a few minutes longer or something. You know what I mean? Like, this right. also wasn't Oppenheimer. <laughs> and then, like, another thing, too, like, on. So I don't know how your theater does it, but AMC, you get a list. And it literally says when the movie ends, which is the last credit. Mm. And there's a time on it. So that's usually when. So he was just waiting around for nothing. Well, this was very therapeutic for me to <laughs> say this out loud to you. And sure. I'm relieved because <laughs> it was it truly like I was shook. You know what I mean? Well, like this I would have been not... just upset. Yeah, I was. I was. I, I was upset. I was like, oh my god. Now I'm. Now I'm still worried. Like, am I going to go back to this theater and this guy is now going to recognize me and I'm I'm going to have to deal with that? I'm, well, I'm mean, a little worried. You write that email. He might not be there anymore. I know, and I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy, but... Well, okay, let me... How old would you say he was? Uh, Not... He wasn't young. He was maybe around our age, maybe a few years younger, a few years older. So, so like, not, knows the situation. Like, it was you dark, can't, but yeah. You can't be the only person who does that. No, I, 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 I would... I, yeah, I wouldn't think so. Yeah, it's It also, like, like, does that amaze you, too, that the amount of people that, like, don't sit around for the... Th like... There have been times in a movie where it's like the final scene drops. It's like, boom, boom, and then people get up and leave. And I'm like, yeah, that is, I understand leaving after a minute, but I don't understand the, like the second it's over. You're like, let's get out of here. Cause like, there's <laughs> definitely times in a movie where it's like, you know, where it's going to end and you can see people getting their coat on. I'm like, right. are you, do you have somewhere to be? It's not like uh, it's not like you're getting out of a, a stadium concert where you're going to be stuck in traffic for 20 minutes. And you want well, that's to leave another early. thing that that we were talking about too the other day because like people who are like, okay, I know the last song, I'm going to leave before the last song, and I can hear it on yeah, the way that's out. Crazy I'm like, too. you're paying for a concert, but that's a different right. Thing. Yeah, but anyway, all right. So that was my tale of woe. I'm glad I'm glad you're on my side uh, and you've heard this. It was it was tr very traumatic for me. <laughs> and, well, it's, uh, it's just very like that guy was a d bag. Yeah. For yeah. lack of better words, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I'll, we'll see if the saga continues. If I run into him again, I'm going to punch him. Punch him. And then, you know, start bringing, like, breadcrumbs. Make a mess. <laughs> yeah, next time he shows up, like, I'm oh, yeah? have some you trash in my pocket. <laughs> have pocket sand. There preferred. you go. See, that's, that's right. And let us know in the comments below. Are you, uh, do you, does yes. this make any sense to you? Do you? Are you a credit watcher? 
give us your verdicts on this one, please. Or if we, you're the, I need it. Or if you're the usher, let us know. We'll have you on the show. Now, our real case today, though, we're going to spend but that a little wasn't more it. time on. I was on. ready. I know. It, it felt dramatic enough. I, I related to that one deeply, being about me. Well, what should his punishment be? <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got he's to wait after every Marvel movie credits, um, you know, all those long credits. He has to go, he has to go be the credits. usher at every showing of the, uh, the Taylor Swift concert movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. He's got to be the security guard and stand in front as if it were a real concert. <laughs> the whole just in time, case just people not... rush the screen. Don't come near yeah. the screen. Sorry. Just... All right. Let's get to the real case today, which is not about movie theaters. In fact, we're, we're talking about the tech world today. All right. Today's case comes to us from the Internet. You can find a link in our episode description. Our defendant today is Nick. Nick is not a tech professional, nor does he work with computers in his actual daily career. In spite of that, however, his family does depend on him for all of their tech support needs. Mm -hmm. His mother, in particular, calls him constantly asking for help with the tiniest things related to her smartphones, streaming dongles, etc., and shows no signs of improving on her own. Finally, Nick reaches his breaking point when she asks him one day to help her set up her iPhone's voicemail, a process which requires essentially pressing a single button. And it's clear that she has taken no initiative whatsoever to solve this problem on her own before turning to her busy son for instruction. Nick refuses to help, telling his mom to Google it or to try anything at all before calling him again. As dual judges here in Geeks on Trial, it's now our job to determine whether Nick should catch his mom a fish or if she needs to learn how to snag one on her own. Metaphor. You see, it's a metaphor for the it's a metaphor for the – it's not about fishing, but it's a metaphor. And it's not about pH fishing either, and it's also not about cat fishing, which are also two tech terms. It's just a metaphor for the case. Okay, folks. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next week. Bye. <laughs> so tech mm. support. Tech now, we, support. We've touched on this in episodes previous, I think, a little mm. bit. But uh, I, I think you have experience with being kind of the, the tech support for your family. Well, I used to be, um, I think I've said in the past, my, my fiance, my partner is a, uh, it professional. So this is what he does for a living. So he is everyone's it support paid or unpaid, unfortunately. And it's kind of like anywhere he goes to, it's like, Oh, d- d- can you help me with this? It's like, I just, I'm showing up for a dinner. Like I'm, I'm here for it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I'm pretty good at, uh, it support, which is similar but it's if there's a scary clown in your sewer. Oh, you call me. What do you, what do, you do for that? Uh, typically, you have to get a group of five kids together, and right. they have an orgy. <laughs> it's huh. It, that's sort of like the it equivalent of plugging now, it, at, unplugging it, <laughs> plugging it back in again. How do you Did you su- try getting five kids to have an orgy? <laughs> how do you support this? What do you mean? Never mind. So, are you the person who like like do you, do your family members? Because you're probably the youngest person in your immediate family. Are you the um, yeah. the tech support for people, or is your family fairly tech? I know your I know your family's not tech competent. The thing is, my family has just mostly given up on having regular communication with me as a son. <laughs> so you win. You won as a son. Yes, they have basically learned that they don't. I don't want. I don't want to be bothered. And they're well because they don't. You've literally picked up the phone and you're like, "Stop bothering me!" And you hang up the phone. But it will often. So I, I will rarely ever get. I really don't get calls or texts Mm -hmm. saying, can you help me with this or that? But often it's like, if I am there, if I am at their house, that's when it's like, oh, while you're here, we've had a router that we haven't set up. That's been sitting there for 14 months (laughs) (laughs) or I don't know how my TV works or, uh, I don't know my password for this or, Hey, remember that, um, remember you got me that Bluetooth speaker for Christmas what does that actually do? <laughs> oh, you mean the one I got you in 2019? Yeah. Huh. Well. Yeah. So that that's when that'll happen. Or like, I, well, we got a new printer set or whatever it is. So, right. yeah, I, I have had to deal with those things. But if, I guess fortunately, for me, I've been blessed where it's, it's, it's not super frequent. Which, and like for me, I usually don't mind it. 
because I'm the kind of person that's like, oh, I'll go to my parents' house and notice like, oh, there's like dust on that printer. They clearly haven't used this printer. Hey, what's going on with the printer? And then like, I'll be like, here, you know, you can just plug it in and it's fine. Or like, I see the the windows has like pop-ups in the background and I'm like, have you updated anything recently? Is there anything going on? Oh no, I've just been clicking emails. I'm like, uh-huh. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> There's also a different kind of of boomer <laughs> out there, right? Uh, which our parents are, which is literally uh, like they are literal. Their age is a boomer. Uh huh. Where some of them will they'll ask for constant tech support because they are constantly trying to use tech and not understanding right. it. I think my parents, definitely my dad, is more like he'll navigate email. And he knows how to use the web browser and email on his iPhone. Right. And that's pretty much it. Like, he's not really attempting to use any other modern technology. He's not the kind of guy who's like, oh, let me see this new technology at Best Buy and pick it up. I don't know anything about it, but the kids are using he it. barely uses a GPS. Right. He, is not, he doesn't have a smart speaker. He doesn't have any streaming like sticks or at all. He's you know he's still using cable. He's using a landline. Right. So there's not that much for him to ask for help on, really. Well, I, I figured it's probably like same with my parents as well. Like yeah, they have a laptop. They have computers because like stuff you need to have in 2023 that they have. And I think that's the issue. It's like people who are so old school are being more and more left behind because they're like refusing almost to like try to learn certain things. Where it's like, if yeah. you kind of, like, paid attention a little bit, you don't need to, like, call someone constantly. Yeah, well, and isn't it also, tech, this technology, a lot of it is no longer new. <laughs> I mean. Right. And it's also, like, a lot of technology now is very user-friendly. It's not like when we were, like, 12, and it's like, okay, I need to contact Comcast, get the IP address, do this. Now it's just, like, plug in, connect to Wi-Fi. Do you remember your password? Well, I don't know. That's an interesting thing. I've I've heard um, statistics on this because uh, supposedly, by and large, Zoomers are not as good at understanding certain kinds of technology as millennials are. It's, it's because, going backwards. Yeah, because everything now, like the applification of it all, is extremely user friendly and intuitive to so the point right. where you don't necessarily need to understand what's happening. Whereas when we were growing up and this stuff was literally first being introduced to the world, we had to understand how do you do this stuff? Because right. it wasn't intuitive. You had to learn it. You had to figure it out. Like and I now, physically had like our back in the day, we used to have websites that we had to code by hand, which I learned from a book. Now it's like, oh, they want a website. They could just do a link tree or they could just do go to GoDaddy or um, Squarespace and it's just or, like drag and drop. Yeah. Why even have a website? You have you have right. a TikTok page or you have a YouTube channel. There's right. no what do you have? a Unless you have a store, then you have an Etsy store. Now, like, let me what do you, there's no websites. <laughs> this kind of happened to me when I went to college. I was I did community college for the first two years. Then I went away to uh four-year university boarding school yeah and boarding school my parents sent me away they're like please leave you're old um when i went into the school it was a brand new building they built and it was for the current generation there was no ethernet it was only wi-fi and i feel like this is a thing that like everybody has been wireless for so long that they're like oh you need to plug in your computer for the internet or you need to plug in your ex you know because it's like you like you're saying you just walk in someplace and there's internet in the air yeah. So it's like, you know, we were, I was trying to explain it. Like, you know, we need plug in Wi-Fi because I'm a film editor or plug in Internet because I'm a film editor. They're like, oh, you don't need that. I'm like, no, but I I do. <laughs> well, yeah. And we're also we are now the the millennial boomers where I don't it, it's maybe this is the equivalent of like, oh, kids, they don't know how to drive a stick shift because cars right. are all manual. Well, have you ever seen that meme? I guess it's a video, but it's like it's. The woman, I forget, I don't, I think she's some kind of politician or whatever. Uh, millennials and boomers a don't know how A woman politician? To... I didn't know they had those in these <laughs> okay, days. Okay, boomer, calm down now. Um, <laughs> they don't know how to read cursive. They can't fill out a check. And then somebody <laughs> right. does the stitch incoming. You can't set up Skype. You can't turn on your computer. Like, <laughs> Right. It's literally yeah. that, which is hilarious. And there's also, yeah, there's so many things like um, 
kids can't tell time by a, like a traditional clock. And it's like, there is, there is me who's like, Oh, that's, that's kind of sad. But then you stop and think about it. And it's like, well, it's like, so right. like, it doesn't really, We've, why do you need that? <laughs> it's called evolution folks. We have a right. digital clock in our pocket. It's not like, like I don't, don't know how to ride a horse is. either. Right. <laughs> you know, because I don't, you don't need to. What about a anymore. cowboy? Uh, well, I have been saving a lot of horses lately. Let me put it that mm-hmm. way. <laughs> um, For Zoomers a rainy ask day. Your grandparents at this point? I don't know how old that Like, I have an analog clock on my wall right over there. The battery's been dead for a year and a half. Mm-hmm. It's there. I have it. It's more so aesthetic because it's like, oh, we have this in our house. This is what you do. But like, yeah, but- I was even thinking about this the other day. We we have a speaker system downstairs, and we're like, oh, we should get a, our receiver died. We should get a new receiver, and then we're like, we get, the Bluetooth speakers are so much better. We don't need to, mm. you know, like it's so weird to us. Like, what was high tech five years ago? It's like, oh, we just don't need it. Well, that's like for me. I feel like the the my hill that I'll die on is always having a desktop computer. Like most people don't have desktop computers anymore. Most people uh, don't have a laptop. Yeah, they have a, they have a phone and a, maybe a tablet or something. Right. Um, unless you're like exporting videos or you're a serious gamer who's really right. doing PC gaming. Which you are a pro gamer. I am a pro gamer. That's uh, yeah, but but I, there's just there's something I have a psychological block where if I'm in my home, I'm like I want I'm at my, uh, desk. my desk. This is my computer time. <laughs> and for me too, like yeah, because like a laptop you can't like upgrade and stuff like that. It's it's gotten to be more disposable, which we were talking about before the show about like cell phone updates and stuff like that. Where like if my hard drive breaks in my lap my desktop, I can just go to Micro Center, get one, open the side, and pop it in. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. but also like you know I am a video editor photographer, so it's like I need something beefier than a tablet. But even though like a lot of these tablets are better than computers now but still i get what you're saying like this is my computer yeah yeah it's my special little pod that i go to (laughs) but anyway these so nick's parents uh they are the ones who are trying to use the technology it sounds Mm -hmm. like which i guess maybe credit where credit's due i don't know for, for well i don't know they're Maybe it's his mom specifically, he says, is not making an effort on her own. He's, she's basically just calling her son and saying, do this for me. Right. And that's like a different. Uh, anyway, continue. Yeah. Well, I, uh, so I don't know. I mean, how much do we uh, give them any leeway for at least being like, well, I, however old they are, uh, I got to assume a 60s. I don't remember if he says, right. but pr- probably in their 60s or older. Uh, they're they have the technology They're they're kind of giving it a go. I guess the the sympathetic, the charitable reading for them is maybe maybe for his mom, this is a way of reaching out to her son, and this is well, something that's what that I was she has an say. excuse. Yeah. This might be like a oh, I haven't seen you in a while. Let me you know. Oh, I can't open Word. Can you come over and just click the button? Just <laughs> and also the worst thing in the world is trying to it your parents over the phone. <laughs> You know, yeah. click the click the power button on the computer, mom. No, that's the monitor. You're turning on the monitor. The computer, the big thing next to it. That's the computer. Is it plugged in? It's not plugged in. Well, what do you? Okay, I'll just be there in two hours. It's fine. You know, it's the worst thing for me, really. It's not my parents. Is the uh, guy I used to work for, mm-hmm. who I've told you stories about. He won't listen to this show. He wouldn't know how. He doesn't. Know. You'd have to tell him how to use a podcast. Who is the guy who's beyond beyond uh, hopeless? Like, is still using an AOL email address, right? And like, he would insist on printing out an email mm-hmm. so that he could read it. Yeah. Okay. And, and he would. He'd have file folders and folders of documents printed out from his email, and then sometimes. He would ask me to scan those documents, and then he would save the scanned copies on his computer also. I can relate and I'm like, to that. You started – you had them – they were there in the first place. Right. Why'd, still why'd, there. You, why'd you print them? Why do you even – who even wants paper? <laughs> like I don't even understand. <laughs> like, I can relate that, to that 100%. I used to work at a doctor's office at the front desk. I was the the young new hire at the ripe age of 30, and the woman next to me was – let's say between 60 and 9,000 years old, right? So Mm. she would have, when she left the job, she retired, I took over her position. I'm going through the file cabinet and it's emails. 
It is printed emails. Oh, our <laughs> boss sent us a memo. The memo needs to be on paper. It's a memo. Let me print out this important memo. I'm reading the memo. Uh, you guys can't wear sandals anymore. I'm like, you don't need to save this. <laughs> It is it is the craziest thing to me. There's there is something in the boomer brain. They just seeing it on a screen. It doesn't work for them sometimes. They, and they like need you need paper. a physical copy, and it still amazes me. Like okay, if I take photographs and I like to print out certain photographs, the amount of photograph printing places that still exist is because of that generation. You walk into Walmart, Walgreens, even some like quick checks and Wawa's, a uh, very East Coast thing, I'm sorry, um, that like you can print out a photograph from your phone still. Right. Just still like boggles like my Pokemon mind. Like Pokemon Snap like, at Blockbuster. Right. Have you ever seen a person, <laughs> this is fun, they take their cell phone and they go to a Staples that have the, uh, the flatbed scanners and they try to scan the information on their phone and it just comes out as black because that's not how this works. I've never seen that. <laughs> That's fun. We have. I live in an older area, but yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. What was I going to say about about old people and how stupid they are? Mm-hmm. What were we going to say about the elderly? They smell bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're not a, really our target demographic, so it's fine. No. We're going to be them soon, right? But it is like there's a few things that like peak for like that generation's IT stuff. And uh, we have one of our, my, my grandmother-in-law, I don't know what you guess that's what you call her. She's 94. She is a woman. She plays a video poker on her computer every day. Like she is 94 and still using the internet. And it's kind of like smart with it, but there's certain things that they, the advertising markets aim towards these people that always get them. One thing being the ring doorbell. There has been a boom for people who are like over 70 who are like, oh, yeah, I need to see who's at my front door. I can't walk that fast anymore. Or, oh, there's burglars. I want video of them stealing what I don't have. (laughs) And they're like, and they could only use a smartphone to use a ring doorbell. And they have like a smartphone from like 10 generations ago. And they can't get it through their heads that like this old iPhone, you can't do this on. You need to get a new iPhone. Well, this is the new iPhone. It was 10 years ago. (laughs) <laughs> I got to buy another one. <laughs> right. Right. What's wrong with this one? <laughs> but like, I don't know if you've realized like, that's like this, like the home security or the internet of things mm. is getting to this generation now. And it's kind of like, Oh, we don't need them to learn how to use Google. I mean, they will well, no, all be need, dead soon. We do need them to use Google, but to search themselves. It's probably better if they just don't, use the internet at all these days. Right. I think it's safer for them and would make a better space for all of us. If the boomers just weren't posting on Facebook or right. <laughs> any of those places. I don't know. It gets us some spicy comments when those people are online. It's great. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Sometimes it does. Um, but do you ever feel like bad when you're like, mom, just go Google it. Because like at a point in your life, you were helping them. They were helping you. Like they taught you how to do certain things. You know how to use like, computers because of like they bought a computer yeah i don't know if they ever taught me how to do anything involving computers i will say i guess i guess they introduced you to it because they brought it into the home yeah there was i mean that is certainly true but i don't yeah there's never been a time i can't remember like ever sitting down and them being like here's ms paint and this is right that was i probably taught them (laughs) yeah i just think i just i honestly don't know what they did with the computer like when we had windows you know, 3.1 or whatever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was even like pre-internet. Like I had, we had a computer and I was. Now it is like, like, it's kind of difficult for me because like my mom, she needs help with little things like, oh, where can I get Photoshop? But my mom's using Photoshop and stuff like that. So she's like on a different level, but it'll be like the, the, the stupid stuff. That's like, even like upsets me where it's like, I just updated windows. Why are all my drivers muted? <laughs> It's like, no, that's no, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, my parents aren't getting that advanced. They're not getting to that point. My, I, I only get annoyed when it's something that I have explained before and then they don't do still. Like my, my mom's car, uh, you know, has she's an Android phone. And if you hook it up to your car, you get Android Auto right. and it has your GPS and all that stuff. And for a long time, she would just like she would pick her phone up while she was driving and like be looking at it for the map as she's driving. And it's and on the screen. To, 
no, she like wouldn't even plug it in. Okay. <laughs> so, she, so I had to like teach her like, look, if you plug it in, but then she'd be like, oh, but then it's I don't know whatever problem she thinks it creates that it really doesn't because it's not the way she's used to. Or the and CIA would, is stealing her information, you know. Yeah, and I would like teach her to do it. I'd be like, look, and you can do all this, or she'll be like, want to change route, and she's like, oh no, how do we do that? And I'll be like, you just you press the microphone, you can just say it. Right. <laughs> and she'll right. be like, what? And then three months later, like she won't be doing that, and I'm. I'm like, I right. taught you to do this. Why don't you listen? Right. Now, it's also <laughs> fair to say that, like, all of our parents are very well-educated people. So it's not like it's like we're trying to teach, like, someone who hasn't, like, gone to school or, you know, it's like they're they're smart people. <laughs> right. Yes. Right. There's now, my... just something that happens when you turn 50. That's like your you brain st- goes, well, you stop that. Now, yeah. the biggest thing for me is passwords. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, I wrote down my password. Uh, I just don't remember what it is. Well, where'd you write it down? I don't know. I forgot it. What? So your password is <laughs> written down somewhere and you don't know where you... Yeah, what, do you, what password is it? Well, so what I use for everything. Oh. <laughs> huh. Now, yeah. this did upset me when I was at Barnes & Noble one day. In the clearance section, they had a My Internet Password book. And I'm like, this is why. This is why we have phishing scams. This is why <laughs> yeah, well, your it's money's usually... missing. You look under the desk somewhere, and it's written on a on a secret post-it note, and it's always four digits. Right. And that's how you hack in, and you know, like video right. games. Right. That's, Remember yeah, video that's games? That's how hacking works. No. I think the the I'm gonna get into the 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 heart of this. The mm-hmm. the heart of this case to me is the kind of the tone that Nick uses, or the demeanor he has in in refusing his mom i mm-hmm. i think it's to me it's certainly justified to get tired of your parents constantly asking you for tech support and right. never making an effort to try it themselves right but is it is it okay is it too far to react and be hostile at a certain point right and how hostile was he being? Can we gauge that from from this report? I'm not sure. I, I feel know. like any amount of hostility, unless your parents are like not nice parents to begin with, and there's like you have, you know, there's like beef before that. But assuming you have a decent relationship with your parents, just don't be hostile with them. Just be like, okay, fine. And like, also a big thing with that generation is writing things down for them, you know, on mm. paper or print it out for them somewhere where they can. Because I've noticed that works a lot too, where it's like. Here, this is what you need to do. Step one, go into this. Step two, go into this. Step three, you know. And you're right. I was thinking about it the other day that I've had to do that for people who are in the younger generation than us as well. Because I do mm-hmm. explain to somebody in the one theater that I work in, it's like, okay, you need to go to the Windows, I, or the speaker icon, and make sure your computer volume is at 75%. Well, what's the icon? It's a speaker. They don't know what that speaker is. <laughs> That's a speaker from like 70 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> right, like the floppy disk, the save icon. Right. You guys, oh, you printed out, you 3D printed the save icon? That was the best thing ever. I laughed. <laughs> I, I mean, what's a, I guess the settings icon is a gear. We don't use right. gears anymore either. Right. <laughs> you just know what that is, though. Um, yeah. Now, I, so I looked at the case file, too, and there is there is maybe another detail that's important here, which is, Nick does say to his mom, look, I'm very busy. This is this is actually his day off or one of his only days off he's had in a long time. And he does say to her, I will set this up for you later. Mm-hmm. And she insists that he she wants him to do it now. And that's when he gets mad and okay, says, so it's, look it up yourself. And in her up. eyes, this is a life and death situation where it's really just I can't print to PDF right now. <laughs> yeah, or set up her voicemail is, is what it is. Oh, right. <laughs> Which Which I can I, see do you that. have to do that? Was that or do you mean she means like recording an outgoing message? Is it not by default when you've got an iPhone, people can't leave voicemails? I assumed can't it was just leave your mail at seven two. Maybe two, she like, wanted you know, a custom. Almost, almost gave message. out my phone number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you fun. know, we can bleep it. Um, there you go. Um, well, my phone number is seven two two. But yeah, I, I assumed like you get a phone. But I've also had the same Google phone, like the same everything's through Google. So everything just kind of transfers over. I also, I mean, this is a whole other <laughs> boomer millennial divide for me. I don't know if you're on this side, but I, I, voicemails, what the, I only ever get voicemails from my older relatives. No, older one, relatives, no one else in my life. 
doctors, like professional it, stuff. Yeah, right. Because if somebody, if, if for me, and I feel like our age group, if they don't answer the phone, you text them. Right. Like what? Unless why would it's you like ever... a. So like, I'm trying to think like the last time if somebody I called died, you... <laughs> maybe. Right. But even then, I'd be like, I would still just text and be like, "Hey, it's an emergency." I think the last time I ever te- called you was like I would show up at your, I was at your apartment, and like you didn't respond to a text. I'm like, oh, he didn't see the text. I'll call him. That to me, or if and you're that... you're out together and it's like, oh, I'll meet you back here in an hour, and you're like, I, right. oh, I'm here. Where are you right now? That's the right. only time I'm ever really gonna call somebody. Because like a text, you'll get like a, a buzz in your pocket. For a phone, it'll be like it's notifying somebody. That's really and then it. My 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 dad also, of course, will always do the, hey, it's your father. Uh, I'm calling at about uh, ten o'clock on a Tuesday. <laughs> yes. Now does and he I'm leave like, his phone number? By the way, I'm doing this, which is also not a thing anymore with your hand. The way oh, because the phone what are you looks. supposed to do? The- That's you do that. Kid, if you ask, I, I don't know. This is maybe not real, but I think it's real. If you ask a Zoomer to, or at least like a kid right now to pretend they're talking on the phone, they'll go like they'll hold their hand like a like they're holding a smartphone. Now I do, do want to I do want to go into a quick listeners gripe can't that I have. see. Yeah. Uh, he was making a uh, phone thing. You know, in his hand. you know what the I'm hang doing. hang loose. He was. Doing. That's right. So. What okay? So this it's it's funny that we talked about two different generations, the youngest and the oldest. At what age do you need to be only doing voice calls or video calls in public with the speakers on? Because <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You better be everything... seventy or older, <laughs> seventy five. <laughs> because I've even noticed like the younger generation. So like let's say twenty and younger, they only do FaceTime or the video calls oh. out in public. And they don't have mm. the earbuds in. So they're on a video call with the speakers fully on. And then the older people are on speakerphone <laughs> in public. And I'm like, what? And like, they're talking to like their accountant. And I'm like, oh, well, write down this information. It might be important. Well, see, this is my boomer divide because I, maybe it's because I don't have an iPhone. So my, my family, especially with my sister as kids. So they're all, they're doing FaceTimes constantly talking to the kids Right. And, and, and the kids don't understand, like, when if they call me, why they can't see me. <laughs> because... Well, that's the weird thing, because it is a, it's now they're talking to grandma and grandpa on video. Well, why can't I see Uncle Jonathan? <laughs> First off, you don't want to see Uncle Jonathan. You <laughs> no. don't. Mm-mm. You don't. <laughs> no. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I, you could know they could do Skype or, or Google or something, they, but they don't. Or Facebook, whatever, any of these video services. Right. But, but, I, but don't I don't want iPhone. to either. I'm not like, I don't. I don't understand. I kind of understand with kids, like especially if you live far away, you're a grandparent. It's right. nice to see the kids, but just a normal conversation. I don't ever want to have to see no. someone. <laughs> what are and you like, crazy? I don't need this view of somebody's <laughs> phone. Which v- listeners, I'm my neck's down. I'm looking up at the phone. Fu- like you don't need good. that. Or it's like not somebody good. in bed with like, oh, why isn't your light on? Or it's the back facing camera. Right. <laughs> but yeah, but still, that's just my, it's so weird. Like we, I was in the doctor's office the other day getting my blood work done and there were three people who were over 65 on the phone. All three of them had speakerphone on. <laughs> and I'm like, it's not that like, can you not hear your phone? Like they what's can't a- hear. I'm not about a uh, speech to text either. I don't know. I don't know about you. I do that while I'm driving. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I'll use that occasionally, but I'm more of the, the swipey type. Oh, you, you do, do the that. swipey type. I've yep. never gotten tried to do it enough to get good at it. I got fat thumbs, so a lot of times I'll uh, I'll type. I'll always pine for the days of physical buttons, you know. Oh, I miss a physical because like I was really good at looking at somebody and texting. Oh yeah, I, I have used two to, conversations. <laughs> I would be at a us. family dinner or wherever oh. I was, and underneath the table, I was sending a whole. I knew exactly what I was saying. No yep. typos, nothing. <laughs> it was you great. Had to click was it uh, two, three times to do C? Let me just. <laughs> oh <We're> man, old. <laughs> I miss it. No. All right. Well, I'm I'm honestly a little. As often happens in these cases, I'm a little bit split on this one, but I I think it's probably wrap up time. As I yeah. usually like to ask, or, uh, uh, what happened? Have we danced around anything uh, or have we covered it all? We covered it all, I think. I think, my, see, my verdict, I would have to, I'll go first in this uh, sense. Okay. Because, like, you know, is he guilty of being a bad son? Like, is that what we're getting at? Is he guilty of, like, 
<laughs> is he guilty of? Yeah. Is it? Was it wrong for him to be frustrated or to or to hang up? And should he have just helped her? I guess is the question. I think what he should because it's a, it's a boundary situation. You do need to set boundaries with people, everyone in your life, including you know your your family and loved ones. So him being like, hey, I can't help you right now, but I'll call you to set a time. Be like, I'll call you tomorrow at noon and we'll hash this out. But I, I do think he might be guilty of, of of just being like, listen, do it your goddamn self. Stop calling me. Because that just seems like you're being a bad son. Could it be annoying at times? Could it be whatever? Fine. But like, don't pick up the phone then. Like you have this ability. You see a phone call. Don't pick it up. If it's your day off, actually have it be so I I do think he is guilty of not being helpful, not not communicating by getting he's guilty of being too upset over the situation. So I say guilty. Okay. Because there are thousands of workarounds that he could do. He could, you know, call me tomorrow, don't pick up my phone. You know, like do something that helps or his past self could have helped more to do this. He could have said, call me when you want. Call me when you need. Call me call in me, the morning. Call me by your name. Elio, 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 Elio. But don't ever call me late for dinner or whatever that saying is. <laughs> yep, that's that's the saying. All right. My verdict. <laughs> what do you think? I, in the abstract, I completely sympathize with him being frustrated and I think he's well within his rights to be annoyed and to not want to be his on-call tech support for his parents like this anymore. And I also definitely think his mom, it sounds like she is pushing too hard or crossing a line uh, uh, where it's uh, some of this is definitely on her Mm -hmm. where I run up against some, some issues is, is what you said where I just don't know if he exactly handled it the best way. It's like he's, it does sound like he was a little more on the rude side than he needed to be. But I'm like, I don't know if like, if this really was his breaking point, if has it really been like, is it every day she's calling? And now this is the time when, when he says, look, I'll set it up for you later. This is my day off. And she says no. And he's finally just like, that's it. I, 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 maybe, maybe it's justified. So I, I think I'm going to lean towards, I'm going to say soft, not guilty. I think he could have probably done a better job and maybe should have. And I would hope that he like after this, at some point <laughs> that has the talk with her and communicates better. And I think you're hundred percent right, but I'm just going to – I'm, like, kind of on the fence. And I'm just going to lean a little bit more towards I get it, and I I don't blame right. him as much. So for me – I completely – Not guilty. Yeah. I compl- <laughs> I understand it. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't need to have this, you know, con- conversation when it's like you could have just texted me. That was also the best thing in the world was when my parents – my mom learned how to text because, like, I didn't need to get a phone call of how's the weather? It looks like there's a storm coming in for you. You get a text. <laughs> Which one hundred percent fine because like you know, even like with my gr- grandparents at the time, or whatever. It's like I don't need to have a long conversation. I do. We have me and my parents call each other on a weekly basis. I have a weekly standing phone call that we have for a while, and I like it because like you know you catch up. My parents now they don't live local. My parents are in Florida, where all parents go once they hit a certain age. So that makes it you know. So like <laughs> I will. Farm. I will do IT for them. And like, you know, the last time they needed a computer, it was like, okay, we'll just, we'll buy one for you. Well, they bought it. We set it up and then we mailed it to them. So we'll do stuff like that. Yeah. My aunt is uh, in particular allergic to text messages. Like she, she will often call me and it's like to ask, you know, what, what do you what have for time, dinner today? What, what what not like what time does or or to let me know like oh this this holiday event starts at five o'clock right and it's like this was a text this was or, this this meeting could have been an email you know or hey sweetie when you come over park in the driveway not in the street right. and because I know if then if I what will be a two sentence back and forth text instead will be a thirty minute phone call and I'm like, right because then it turns I don't into need that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> the family, the family sum up of what's been going on the past three weeks or whatever. 
Uh, yeah. Which is but why, anyway. if you, here's a fun tip for you. Do a phone call once a month or once a week. You get rid of that. Mm. Or just ne- never do one. Well, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone has different tactics. There's different ways right. to approach these things. Well, that was my other thing with him. Just why did he pick up the phone? Yeah, well, it, it could have been an emergency, maybe. I don't know. Which she's could have left a voicemail. <laughs> that's true. Also, the worst voicemail. Hey, call me back. Oh, oh yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Or or some or you'll get a text and it's like, "Hey, call me now, please." Right, and then are you the kind of like, person who somebody jumps? died? Yeah, you jump right to that conclusion of, oh, they're in the hospital. Because it's like with a period at the end. Right. <laughs> it's like, oh, this is this is bad. And then, like, you call and they don't answer. And you're like, they're yep. dead. And then, when <laughs> they're, they do, they're dead. <laughs> and then when they do pick up the phone, it's like, oh, you remember back in 1992 when we had turkey? It's like, what, what does that mean? Why? Why are you calling me about <laughs> Thanksgiving? This happened to me once. I, like, I called my sister. And I was like, have you heard from mom? Like, she sent me a text message. She's not answering her phone. I don't know if she's okay. And it was like the next day or something. She was like, oh, yeah, I just fell asleep. I don't know. It was just a, <laughs> it's like, you can't send a text. You must just say what the call's about. It's just so funny tell that me. <laughs> the roles are reversed because you know you've done that in like college where it's like your mom, you send a text. Okay, bye. And then like they called you. Oh, my God, you're dead. <laughs> Yeah, well, at that, that point, the conversation's over. There's no right. there's no need to start it. Right. Look, we need to give out sentences for these people. Uh, and this is a mistrial, which means that both parties are being punished. So I will be punishing the mom. And I'll be punishing she, Nick. I mean, obviously, she's got to go take, like, a course on, like, an, there's I'm sure there's a, a good senior citizen's intro to tech in her community that she could take. And she's got to do some Zoom meetings. She's got to yep. – I think we need to set a goal for her. Where she has to learn how to set up a – like download Photoshop and make a picture or something Something beyond her level like of use, expertise. Like use PowerPoint. Because yeah. let me tell you, how many Create professors – PowerPoint. How many professors have you had in your lifetime who are college professors who are like, okay, I don't know how to use PowerPoint? I'd like you to become proficient in Excel, please. Excel without any help from me. Thank you. And I think uh, Nick needs to go work at Geek Squad for uh, a, a week in an area near an old folks home. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Those are our verdicts. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this case. You can email them to us via geeksontrial at gmail.com. An well, email is also... an electronic mail that you send. It's, you don't need a stamp. You just send it via the internet. Ask your millennial child for help if you need it. Mm-hmm. You can also go there to submit your own geeky cases if you have a uh, some kind of a dispute in the world of geekdom, send it to us, whatever the case may be. We will read it on the show and settle your disputes for you. If that's too hard for you, we also have an electronic form in our episode notes, which is so easy to use. You don't even have to send an email. Now you can print out that form and send it to us, but we don't have, uh, we don't have mail. We don't have physical mail. True. Yeah. You can't fax it to us either. (laughs) Nope. Oh, God. I hate facts. Anyway, and if you want to help support the show so we can get a fax line, so we can get your, your comments, concerns, and all that, you can head over to patreon.com slash geeks on trial and get early episodes and other fun stuff for just a few bucks a month. And uh, bucks are money. And uh, you, Patreon is a place for you to send money if you don't yeah. have. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. If you want to follow us on the internet, you can. While you'll find my work at my personal website, which is jonathanestes.com, uh, you'll find all the things I do there, YouTube videos, newsletters. It's a lot of fun. And you can find me over at ivanhan.com and The Snack Guy on YouTube. It's, uh, it's, I guess it's fun. I'll, I'll say it's fun. <laughs> sure, you might as well. Yeah. Why not lie? And until next time, I'm Ivan Hahn. I'm Jonathan Estes, and this has been another edition of Geeks on Trial. Geeks on Trial.